Hey Texas, you're in for a lot of changes and some surprises on the lakes, inshore, offshore, and beyond. But don't worry, our guides have all the information that you'll need to adjust and reel in some fun this weekend. You're watching the Texas Insider Fishing Report, which starts now. now. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Captain Rick Murphy and Brie Gabrielle, ready to start your weekend off right. You know what? what? We are. And what I'm really <laughs> excited about is yes. our guys aren't in the dark anymore. Ha <laughs> ha, they're not in the dark, I know. <laughs> what a neat thing to be able to experience though. This is they amazing. had Once total in darkness in I know. Texas. It was it's so awesome. So cool, my daughter had on glasses and she was looking up at the sun. It was a, it was a cool time for it her was. too. All right, let's see what Dave Farrell has to say at the Yak Gear Workbench. You know what, Dave? It's always something. I'm always in the dark, pretty much. <laughs> I uh, spend my life in the dark like a mushroom. But no, we're, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about drop shotting today. You know? Drop shot. Yeah, 101 type stuff. 101. You're bringing us into the light. Yes. I love it. All right, this week we're getting you started with a ton of options in the lower fresh region on Falcon, Choke Canyon, Lake Amistad, Decker, Travis, and Bass Drop with Matt Reed. Show us your bass, Matt. Hi, right, Bray. Let's get this thing rolling. Uh, I was going to start out talking about my babies down here at Falcon Lake. The bass are cooperating uh, really well right now. Uh, the pattern's definitely not my normal deal. Uh, the fish are buried up deep, six foot deep in the six foot deep willow trees. I mean, they're right at the base of the the, the tree. You have to drop it through the top, get it down to the base. Uh, catch a bunch of fish in the three to five pound range. And I've, I've not landed a true giant lately. I did get a nine pounder out yesterday. Uh, the biggest issue here is that once you stick a big one in the middle of where they are, you, you, you can't get her out. So it, it, it it's a blast. We've been broken off several times, but it, it's just cool, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, trying to get one out on a short line and, 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 and leaning on them. <clears throat> well, I'm Mike Bates, send me a report from Choke Canyon. Bass are now in post-spawn, but his numbers have been great lately with 50 to 60 fish days. Uh, mainly four pounds or less. The bigger fish have been hiding from him this week. First thing in the morning, there's a shad spawn going on. Chatterbait square build. Rattle bait type stuff it is phenomenal. It's lasting for several hours depending on the weather. After that, he's throwing a Texas rig or Carolina rig out in eight to 12 feet. Uh, he says colors on the soft plastics don't seem to matter much right now. Uh, Kirk Dove sent me a report from Amistad. Water temps have climbed into the low 70s and the bass have primarily finished the spawn cycle and they're in recovery. Uh, finesse plastics have been good out to 10 feet but the larger fish seem to be out recovering on the ledges at 15 to 25 feet. Uh, fishing soft plastics very slow out there ha has produced some big bites. Uh, he's really looking forward for the shad spawn to kick off, which should happen any day, and that will spark another real strong bite in the shallow water. Uh, Brian Cotter, same report from the Austin area. Decker Lake's fishing real well. There's still a few fish around the beds in the back of the coves. Uh, a lot of them have started to move out a little bit. Those fish in the coves are eating lizards and creature baits. Uh, also, a, a, a wacky rigged general will get you a lot of bites in that watermelon and green pumpkin color. Uh, but some of the bigger fish are out on the main lake showing up deeper. Uh, more of those will show up every day. Lake Travis has been fishing well. Uh, the fish are starting to move out of the pockets out toward the, the ledges and stuff at, at the front of the spawning bays. Uh, Catching those fish on the on those ledges and cliff walls with jigs, crankbaits, and Texas rigs. Uh, he's also throwing a shaky head out in that 12 to 30 feet of water on those drop-offs to catch some bigger ones. Uh, he's catching a lot of numbers, 25 to 50 fish a day on most days. Uh, he's looking forward to, to top water season. It's just around the corner. Those, those post-spawn fish really get on that uh, coming up pretty soon. Lake Bass Drops, fishing well. Uh, a lot of the fish there have already moved out to the deeper points and drop-offs, uh, catching those fish on Carolina rig uh, fluke-style baits, Texas rig worms, and even some, some football jig bites out there. Uh, also, don't forget to throw a spinner bait or a shaky head up against the edge of the grass in the shallow water. There's still some fish roaming up there. 
Um, so there's just a lot been a you know a lot of activity in the South Texas lakes. We're finishing up the spawn, and they're all getting ready to eat. Uh, got three pictures here. Uh, got <coughs> Jeff <coughs> with a fa uh, Falcon Lake bass from a couple of days ago, and then Mr. Ray Houston with another one from down here. <coughs> and then you got Kurt and Eric with a couple of, of Lake Amistad chunks. All right, man, you did great with the with the bass pitchers. Go ahead and tell us about the crappies. All right, crappie fishing like Somerville has been extremely good. Most of them are around the brush piles in that 10 to 12 feet of water, uh, especially in Yewa and Birch Creek parks, and those places are easy to get to. Get you some shiners under a float, and then you'll concentrate on that brush pile, slip cork, or let it down to the right level just above the brush where you can catch those. Also, catching some on a chartreuse jig, but a uh, limit of good eating crappie is always fun. All right, thank you so much, Matt, for starting us off. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the lower fresh region. Matt says that Falcon Lake, the bass are cooperating well. The bite is best flipping sinkos in the deepest willows. It's pretty much hand to hand combat when you hook one. Come and join some of that fun. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, Hand -hand. I love it. All right, get ready for the Front Runner Boats Upper Coast Region because Captain Carl Weston has some big bull reds to talk about and the bling are back in town. So listen up, hey Carl. Hey guys, here we are back week seven, uh, Week two is great and the fish, are, the fish bite is early this year in the Upper Coast. Now the black drum bite has picked up in the past few weeks. Once again, it's early, so it's a good sign for this year. That water temp is holding around 70 degree range and the bait's getting easier to refine, so that, that makes it all worthwhile for us here. We got bait, we've got fish. Now the fish bites, blue crab has been my favorite for these guys this week. But the black drum will feed on a variety of cut bait. These fish can be a little funny to find at times, and on the calm days we have, you can really find them back in their grass flats, back there uh, spinning. And, uh... Well, it looks like we lost Carl. We'll try to get him back on the phone. But basically what he was saying, that you're gonna go ahead and use, a gra in those grass flats, you're, those fish are searching for f food. A simple slip rig with about 18 inch space between the cork and a 5-0 trocar hook. Uh, tip it with a chunk of the blue crab fish bites or a piece of fresh mullet. He loves using a pin. Uh, which makes a bunch of spinning rod combos from 15 to 25 pound range. He also has a picture here of Evan with uh, his first black drum of 2024. All right, moving uh, inshore to the next thing would be bull redfish. He says fishing at the Galveston jetties for bull redfish has been good so far all year long. Depending on the wind direction, many of these areas is protected from the waves and makes a fun day of fishing. The anglers have simply chose to anchor near the jetty mouth and throw a lot of chum. Carl, tell me about free lining live shad at the jetties for the big bull redfish. Well, in the incoming tide, We'll get some of that green water coming in. And it seems like the fish are, are, are running that line. So if you can free line at that time, the, your chances are great. You know, live shrimp, the bigger finger bullet works as well. You know, if artificial is your bag, then try that Berkeley 110 Magic Swimmer in green mackerel. Back along those rocks too, in that clean water, it seems to work really good on that incoming tide. And like we had said, look for that clean water. These fish are running it, the bait's trying to hide duck back in that dirty water. And so if cut bait is your thing though, hey, you know, I've had one of these for a couple of years. The Taco Marine cutting boards, they're awesome. They last forever. And our picture, we have a picture of Cindy Lou, a friend of ours with a big bull red today. All right, let's go ahead and move offshore. Great fish there, Cindy. Well, you know, here we go. Let's talk about the Lang Cobia, uh, for, uh, you know, back and forth. But when you're heading off, the jetties this year, the first few navigational markers you hit, trust me, take a look around them, throw a little bait in the water. We always keep a, a pen pitch rod rigged with a swim bait or a bucktail jig. Another option is, you know, keep one rigged with about three foot of that 40 pound vanished fluorocarbon leader and a six, a six aught trocar hook with a live bait. If you've got some live bait, that always works. That five inch Berkeley ripple shad swim bait seems to be irresistible to them too, Rick. Keep it ready and rigged. Baits are very appealing in the color and the action they have. Ling just love to chase them. 
Uh, we got a picture of Danny today trying to get a big old girl in the box today. Nice. All nice. right, one to go. What do you got, bub? Deep dropping for towelfish. That is our favorite fish to eat here in Texas, it seems. And it's, it's a lot of fun, but you know, they can be really tiring. You're in 1,500 foot of water, <laughs> your arm's getting tired quick. So a lot of people have gone to electric reel. And there's a real valuable solution that will save that arm strength and give you freedom to move around that front rudder boat. Abyss battery makes a very, an awesome mobile battery pack that straps to the front of the fishing rod, to the foregrip with a short power cord. This charge lasts up to 90 hours. I mean, that's amazing. 90 hours, I've tried it. It's a game changer targeting golden towelfish. You know, it's it's exciting. You can move around the boat. Uh, you you were used to be strapped to that wire that was plugged into the plug, and that's going. So you get that, you get your deep drop ready with four or five hook combo. The glow skirts on it's great. That's always a good option. Hook size, say seven to 10, whatever you like to fish. And then talking about weights, I start out with like two to three pounds, Rick, and that will vary on the tide, you know, how strong the tide is. I use cut squid, bait fish, cut bait fish is great, but you want your rig to lay on the bottom for these fish. And, you know, like we talked about before, if you get a little bit of uh, fish bites and tip those hooks, you're gonna improve your bite. To, you know, it stays on the hook longer. Uh, we've got a picture today of old Leon and Danny getting those deep drop holes landing twin towelfish. Yeah, they look like twins themselves. Good job with all the pitchers and way to recover from uh, the phone call getting dropped, bud. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the upper coast region. He says, cast fish bites blue crab on a slip sinker rig while targeting black drum thinning in the grass flats and those backwaters. And then offshore, chase cobia or ling around uh, the can buoys in the channel and toss that five inch Berkeley power bait, such as the ripple shad, ought to get those cobias. Get them cobes. All right, well, it's time for the 30th annual Skeeter Owners Tournament at Lake Fork. Thousands of Skeeter owners travel to celebrate the world's first bass boat and fish for their chance to win up to $200,000 in cash and prizes. Get registered today and come join us for a weekend to remember June 6th through the ninth by scanning that QR code right there on your screen. All right, the fish bites two hundred thousand dollars. Ha ha. All right, the fish bites middle coaster news getting you ready for your jetty next. But first, Dave's ready for the drop shot at the Yak Year Workbench. Two hundred thousand dollars. I was gonna do that. <laughs> two hundred thousand. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about some different baits that you might want to put on a drop shot instead of just the old stick worms. Perfect. Try some new stuff. Loving the options. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Fenwick. Feel everything. Bahio. Blue light blocking, radically clear polarized fishing sunglasses. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. 30 years of fishing for adventure. Berkeley, your fish, our science. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats, eat, sleep, fish. Well, we're here at the Yak Gear Workbench. Dave, we're gonna be talking about rigs and techniques. Let's jump into the drop shot. Yeah, well, you know, it's the drop shot is generally used as a finesse bait. You know, it's uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But most of the time, that's what you're using on a high pressured fish. You know, fish get get a lot of you know people fishing for them a lot, or, or they're just hard to get a bite in your regular stuff that you're using. Sometimes dropping down in weight and using this tactic will will get some bites. And you can either vertical jig a drop shot from a boat. Or you can cast it from the boat and drag it to, towards you, or even cast it from shore and drag it to you. Mm -hmm. But it's a very natural presentation. That's the that's the original right there. Pretty much a robo worm with a with a uh, with a regular worm hook and a, a, a small weight on the bottom of it. And what one of the most important things to do is when you're tying these is is to tie your hook on there with a palomar knot right. or a uni knot so that the hook it tries to get as perpendicular to the main line as possible. Right. So that the hook just sticks straight out from the line naturally. And then right. it'll sag a little when you put a bigger bait, when you put a bait on it. But right. that's what you're trying to do with the hook pointing up. Right. You want the point hook, the hook of the point 
up so when the fish comes and eats it, it gets hooked in the top of the mouth. And that's really what, you know, that's your normal main way to use it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you do want to do is it's not necessary to jig that thing all crazy. Vigorous. You know, yeah, a lot of people, you know, they think, well, it's, you know, sitting up there and it'll flutter and do all kinds of stuff, and it will. But most bait fish don't do that. You know, they stay pretty still and, and vertical, you know, I mean, horizontal. So they, they don't really move around a whole lot. So you can really, you know, turn off a lot of fish by moving it too much. Getting jerky with it. Exactly. So, you know, sometimes less is more. It's not, not like saying you're not going to catch them sometimes by jerking it a lot. And sometimes you might have to. If you're not catching them when you're catching anything, when you're not moving it at all, go ahead and jerk it a little bit. But usually, you know, just try to do it as, as little as possible. A good medium action rod with a medium fast tip will get you moving it without really having to move it a lot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the boat's rocking or whatever, you can just keep still. And if you have a really fast tip, it'll, it'll move it on its own. And that's even more subtle and better. Um, use light wire hooks. We got a lot of different hooks on here, but a light wire hook is really good. Now using a trocar hook because of that really, you know, sharp, hook that it is it penetrates really easily so you can actually go with a heavier hook just because that trocar will go in a lot faster and quicker and it'll facilitate those hookups and the bait action as well with a light wire we're going to want to use a, a braided line to a monofilament leader um, braid because it's very sensitive and doesn't stretch and you can feel every little tap yeah you know especially so with how that, big a braid dave you don't want to go over 10 pounds you know eight or 10 pounds you know maybe 15 so the x9 berkeley would work really well exactly a small or a, there's trilene yeah you know you can use a trilene pure monofilament all the way through if you want or you can use that as your leader you could just go from the from the berkeley uh braid down to that trilene sensation there Got uh it. use a heavier weights with bigger baits now I w that was one of the things i was saying you know <coughs> this doesn't have to be a finesse deal uh this will work with big baits you know that's a big fat job and you can put a two-aught hook in there yeah and really it, you can really smoke big bass with those things put obviously you might want to put a heavier weight if you're in deeper water uh you know the three eighths ounce or up you know even up to a quarter ounce weight i wouldn't go in much heavier than that a lot of guys will put a great big weight on there as well and it's not necessary those pro car hooks again because that once they eat that when it's flutter fluttering that fish will come straight into that that pro v and he'll get locked in there, and yeah. it's hard for him to get this out. This is the TK-137 right. OV-1 And you can nose hook these baits, like with the little ones here. I've, I've got a couple that are <clears throat> nose hooked. Oh, yeah. You can either nose hook them uh, with, the, with the hook point completely inside the bait, or you can even have it come out a little bit if you want. If you're in a big weedy place, though, that's a, a great thing to do is to have that hook buried in the nose so it's not poking out. Dang. Oof. I try to go as fast Oof. as possible. We never have enough time. <laughs> Less is more. We might have to turn this show into an hour and a half. Yeah, why Let's not? Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. You know what's catching my eye over there, though? That castaway coffee. Whoo, I want to try it. Okay. You know, give me some. All right, Captain Bink Grimes is helping us figure out the finicky fishing in the Fish Bites Middle Coast region right now. But if anyone can do it, he can. Put us on the fish bank. All right, we, we like to plan before we hit the dock this time of year. Right now, you better have a few plans in your back pocket to catch fish been a grind at times that's just the spring but any day you get a break in the wind we've been catching some really healthy trout in east matagorda bay it's mostly been on the west end since most of the winds have been from the westerly factor and it, that allows those uh that water to stay clear god lee a warm key said live shrimp under a mid coast popping cork's been best he's been making long drifts covering lots of ground and concentrating on consistent locales and working the major and minor bite with the moon trout are beginning to slick on the shorelines and uh, West Patagorda Bay. Slick is the term we use when fish are feeding and the oil for the bait fish they're consuming puts a sheen on the water, much like dropping a, a drop of oil on the water. That's usually when they're, they're starting to eat mullet and, uh, and shad. And that's what's happening right now is our temperatures are in the 70 uh, degree mark. In Rockport, the incoming tide's been good for waders around Mud Island, Island's Bite, and Super Flat. Super high tide right now with these winds. Some are throwing Mar Miller top dogs, others tossing Corky, Soft Dines, and Bass Assassins. Uh, Port O'Connor anglers have hit uh, hit from the wind in the marshes, the back of the south shoreline, uh, east Spirit of Santo Bay and San Antonio Bay. Some are waiting those back lights for topwaters. 
with uh, with high tides and uh, soft plastic swim baits like the bass sass and sea shad. Others taking a bucket full of shrimp and tossing those uh, corks off those shell points and getting their fish. There's a photo of a nice fish that we released this week while drifting five foot of shell in East Matagorda Bay. Uh, it's, it's been good when you can get out there. Our redfish action in Matagorda, most boaters are hitting those points and structures along South Shore Line with, with live shrimp. They stop for five minutes and then they move. If they don't get a bite, one here, one there. You just keep moving. Uh, others uh, are camping on the mud flats and waiting for those reds to, to show up. It's gotten a little easier lately with our higher tides. We've been waiting for them uh, for a long time. Uh, toss a, a chunk of fresh mullet, set the rod in the rack, and wait for the thump. It takes patience, but at the end of the day, you'll have a pretty good box of reds. Then those bull reds are all over the beaches and jetties. Guys on foot are tossing big chunks of crab and mullet in the first gut on the high tide. Um, and those jetty anglers, they're walk, walking the ocean side on the incoming and then the channel t- uh, side on the outgoing. Lots of redfish on the edge of the ICW from uh, Sergeant of Matagorda, live shrimp in the ticket there. Anglers working the trolling motor on the drop-offs have done well. Don't be afraid to work off color water. Redfish are uh, sight and scent feeders. Old Pro uh, will will kind of spice it up and peel some of those shrimp to get a little bit more scent out there. Uh, and when that bites, a little fickle. Work those same waters. You work uh, with with a black drum as well. A lot of drum, a lot of redfish on that shell right now with the high tides. Offshore at Matagorda, uh, Michael Quebec has said there's more Kobe and triple tail showing up beneath large wraps of seaweed. <clears throat> been rough out there. But when you get on the big pond, it's been been pretty good. It's, it's the coming days, uh, we're going to have a little bit more consistent action. Swordfish have been reliable about 90 miles out. Rebecca took a, a healthy sword this week while drifting the hilltops. I want to say I want to welcome uh, Ducks Unlimited to TIFR. Uh, ducks are a big part of my life, always have been. Uh, I've worked on numerous projects with DU, worked endless banquets, published photographs, DU magazine written uh, countless articles for them. I write the migration report for a Central Flyway Forum. I see daily the difference that DU is making for waterfowl habitat. I'm out there with them all the time, and it, I just see and I'm welcome to the show and, and glad glad they're on board. That's another uh, good week in the Fish Bites Middle Coast region. Remember, it's pretty cool to catch and release. It's not cool to kill a bunch of fish, take a picture, and post it on social media. And do what's best for our fishery. And uh, good Lord will take care of you. All right, thank you so much, Bink. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots for the Middle Coast region. Bink says in Rockport, the trout are good along St. Joe Island on small top waters and plastics on the incoming tide. And then on Port O'Connor, the redfish are steady at the jetty on shrimps and crabs. And then waders have found some good schools of red in the back lakes on bass assassins. Steady at the jetty. Steady at the jetty. I just feel so positive and ready to do life after Banks reports. Yeah. Just closes them out, ready to go. Oh, I just feel so good. See you next week. Well, if you like a good morning topwater sesh, then follow us into the Middle Fresh region. We come back, plus we're talking with our friend from Bahio Sunglasses. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Texas. Scan that QR code on your screen to check out all of our social media pages, our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy, where you can see new fishing adventures along with reports and so much more. Plus, on our website, we have our brand new show merchandise to enhance your fishing wardrobe. So scan away and get yours now. We'll be right back. Go get your behills there. Go get them. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. Abyss Battery, power your pursuit. Ducks Unlimited, leader in wetlands conservation. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Berkeley Prospect Chrome and Penn, let the battle begin. Well, joining me is my friend Al Perkinson, the founder and CEO of Beheel Sunglasses. Al, welcome to the Texas Insider Fisher Report. Thank you, Rick. Good to be here, man. So let's talk a little bit about Beheel. What do people need to know and maybe what they don't know? Well, I tell you, Rick, you and I have been fishing together, what, 20 20, years? 20 plus. 20 plus years. And we know that maybe beside the rod and the reel, the fishing sunglasses are the most important tool you have on the boat. Without the a doubt. The better you can see, the better that you can fish. And at the very heart of every pair of great sunglasses 
is the lens. So when we started Bejio Sunglasses, that's where we zeroed in on. First thing we did was we came up with the technology that nobody else had that blocked all the blue light and made everything super clear. So if you go out on the water, try every pair of sunglasses they have in the shop, you'll come back and you'll say, give me the Bejio's because they're super clear. Now, a lot of people ask us, what is the right lens color for the type of fishing <clears throat> that I do? Right. And uh, there's a lot of lenses out there. We have 14 different lenses. You know, we're all fishermen, and so we have a specific lens for every type of water and light condition out there. Um, so it can be hard to choose. I would say to start with, pick glass. Glass is clear and more scratch resistant. Then you have colors of lenses. So in general, there's a different color for each type of fishing that you do. The blue is gonna be great for offshore, the green is gonna be great for inshore, the silver is gonna be great for a river or a lake type of condition. Then we have pink and purple. So those are our fun colors. Those are for the dark or light, dark conditions where it's cloudy or there's tree cover, uh, maybe it's sunrise or sunset. All of those lenses, because of the technology, let you see the fish deeper into the water. The more fish you see, the more fish you catch. So blue for offshore, green for inshore, silver for lakes and bays, low light is purple and pink. I love the fact that Bejios are made right here in the U.S. and Florida, but more importantly, they're built by, from top to bottom, by people that fish, including you all the way to the guy that may be putting your glasses together today. Real quickly, tell me about the warranty, Al. Well, that's the thing. You know, it's one thing to have a great pair of sunglasses, but it's really important to have a company that stands behind it. So we repair all the sunglasses. We have a, limp, a lifetime warranty on our product. If something goes wrong, call us. A real person will answer the phone, and we'll have your repair to you in 48 hours. Where do we go for information? BahioSunglasses.com? BahioSunglasses.com. Call us, and uh, we'll take care of you. You did a great job. Not <laughs> bad for a CEO. Not so <laughs> bad. Bahios are definitely a game changer. All right, your Startron Middle Fresh Region Guide is monitoring some changes on Toledo Bend, Sam Rayburn, and Rich chambers so let's hear the update matt glad you're not in darkness anymore uh all right Bree. yeah absolutely we uh got a lot going on over here right now uh things are changing you know we're the seasons are changing so we just got a lot of a lot of movement going on right now so we're going to start off talking about the largemouth bass on toledo bend that bite is changing rapidly here with the changing conditions uh the water temperature is holding now in the mid 60s and the level is on the rise so with all the rain that we had earlier in the week, I'm anticipating a considerable rise in lake level once all that runoff gets into the lake. And this is the time of the year the lake level generally starts coming up anyway. They're not generating quite as much. They're trying to let that let the water fill up uh, so they can generate all summer. And the fish are changing gears as well. So they're, they're kind of transitioning more and more out of the spawning mode and into that uh, post-spawn shad chasing mode. So the shad spawn's been happening kind of on and off in some key areas for a few weeks now, but the water temperature is finally staying consistently high enough now that it's happening more widespread around the lake. It's just that time of year. And more and more bass finishing the spawn, transitioning over to where those shad are to kind of get fed back up after spawning. It's just making for some great action. So this is one of my favorite times to fish. The top water action gets vicious right now. So make sure you keep those top water plugs at the ready especially at first light. That shad spawn is an early morning deal, so take advantage of that first thing in the morning. And then when the morning action slows down, you just have to slow down with it. Throughout the day, slow sinking soft plastics are the way to go. Uh, that Bass Assassin fat job or the shad style baits from Bass Assassin are great for this type of, of fishing. Just rig them on, a, on just a hook only, just no weight at all. Uh, throw them out there and just dead stick them real slow when those fish get lethargic after they feed all morning. And uh, speaking of Toledo Bend bass, we got a photo for you here of Mr. Ryan there with a nice Toledo Bend tank he caught. And you see that fish is a real dark green grass fish, beautiful there. Mm -hmm. uh, caught with Captain Brandon O'Neill. All right, now we're gonna move over to Sam Rayburn. Uh, the bite's been really hot at Rayburn as well. The lower water conditions have the fish bunched up out on the edges of the flats and the point. Crankbaits and Carolina rigs have been the ticket over there and some top water action as well. But we'll have to wait and see how much Rayburn comes up from these recent rains. I don't really know if they'll get all that rainwater sucked out quickly or if they'll kind of let it rise for a period of time and then come down slow. I'm sure it's gonna jump up some, but I believe they're working on the dam still over there. So they're probably gonna have to get it back down pretty quick, 
if there isn't too much flooding downstream. It just kind of depends on how all the rain winds up flowing. Uh, we'll have to see on that one. Now, moving up to Richland Chambers, there's a topwater bite going on up there as well this week. Mr. Thurman Selman with Bass Specialty Guide Service says that the bass are feeding on top early in the morning around Hickey Island and Pelican Island. And then after the sun gets up, he says you can find them out on the points and the humps. And the best bait has been creature baits like the bass that's had some skunk ape or that whoopah craw. All right, now switching over to white bass. Uh, Richland Chambers, again, whites are hanging out on the points there and about 20 feet of water. They're being caught on jigging spoons, jigged right off the bottom. We're gonna go in reverse order here, back to Toledo Bend. Pretty much the same pattern. I'm gonna sound like a broken record here for a minute. Whites are on the points, guys. Look, on a lot of these middle fresh region lakes, that's just what they do this time of the year. Sitting out on the ends of the points. Uh, Toledo Bend, it's been about 15 to 25 feet of water. And then on Rayburn, it's been a little bit shallower, up as far as about 12 feet of water, all the way out to 20. Jigging spoons are usually the ticket. If you're out there crankbaiting for the largemouth bass, a lot of times you'll get the white bass on the crankbaits as well. So just fix your poison there. Now we're gonna finish up with some catfish. Uh, that's some of everybody's favorite table fare. They're great fish to eat. So if you wanna get some to throw together a good fish fry, the Lita Bin's a great place to do it right now. The catfish here have been moving shallow more and more by the day. You can find them up on the shallow ridges in about three to five foot of water. They're up there real shallow. And uh, you can just take a big night crawler worm under a cork. I find that to be about the easiest way to catch them. Some guys like cut bait and shad and different things. There's lots of different options. Uh, but just float that cork up there on those ridges or on some of those main lake uh, uh, seawalls and things like that. And you can find them there in three to five foot of water. Thank up you. at Richland Chambers, Mr. Thurman tells me that the catfish bite is good there too. But there, they're hanging out on the main channel and he says they're biting shad or punch bait. Thank you so much, Matt. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine System. Hot spots from the Middle Fresh region. Matt says the bass are biting topwater plugs early in the morning and then they're wanting something slower during the midday. The white bass are biting good out on the points on jigging spoons and then the catfish are shallow biting worms, shad, and some punch baits, Bree. Nothing like a sunrise top water. Mm, nope. That's such a fun time. All right, now let's see how we're catching red and trout inshore and red snapper plus a bonus Dorado or two offshore in the sea sucker lower coast region with Captain Chad Kinney. What's up, Chad? I tell you what, uh, April's, you know, kind of a finicky time of the year. It can be a really great fishing. So my, my, my get 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 a good look on the weather there as far as what the winds are doing. We got a we're in the lower coast here, so these winds will push out of the south 30 mile an hour one day, and they'll come out of the north. And then uh, when you get that little stall in between, that's when it's actually kind of getting better for the offshore stuff. So we'll start with the inshore and get you a report where to go and how to catch these fish with these conditions we're, we're dealing with. Right now, I'd head to the land cut, uh, like I said, especially some of these higher winds for two reasons. One, the fish are there, and two, you get protected from that or there if you got some of that blow going. And then you work those drop-offs of the oil guts for the trout and the redfish are actually both up in there, which which is kind of unusual. The trout fishing, it's of course the whole state now, but new limits, which are three fish, 15 to 20 inch slot, and you get one over 30 inches. You know, if you do get lucky and you catch a big trout like that over 30, if you don't mind, you know, definitely catch the practice and release. It'd be good on that. Uh, definitely head to the land cut there and work those edges of those grass bits along the ICW. Uh, the saltwater assassin, sea shad, the magic grass is working really good and the color uh, is working really good. Also try some mirror lure top waters, especially early. Um, and go through there and cast up on the bank, work it down to the edge of that drop off and also cast that top water along the edge of the grass bed. So all those banks are only, you know, 30, 40 feet from the drop off right there. So kind of work all angles, that bait will be up and falling off on the on bottom and it'll work really good. Uh, best bet is to use your, uh, your Rodan trolling motor, keep it right off the edge where you can work that drop off and get all the action to the bank and everywhere else like that, get you in position. Also, if you're starting to work some of those edges in the oil guts like that, then just power pull down and you can uh, work those drop off also. So, got a really good, nice trout here. It's an oversized release uh, by Captain Ernest Cisneros of uh, Skunk Again Chargers. Wow. So, nice. moving the redfish, <clears throat> there's been a, a good, some good movement up there in the land cut the redfish. Uh, using the same techniques as we talked about in the trout right there, the top water, salt water assassins, basically use the same thing, but you can add into your scenario there. Get a Carolina rig rigged up with an eagle claw kale hook, about a five to seven knot in size, and add a fish bite strip to it. So get like a three quarter ounce, half ounce, you know, a slide in white, their egg weight, <clears throat> put it on your Carolina rig, cast on the drop off. 
you can you know set it and forget it if you want to you can throw your lures while you're doing it but those redfish will move up and down they'll get attracted by the scent from that from that fish bite and they'll just take off with it so we got a picture of an oversized redfish also is caught actually on the same day there with that Ernest scenario so skunked again charter so wow him putting those good reports there and he the wind was howling that day and he's up there and he just hammered the fish so and moving to offshore state water snapper fishing we talk about a lot the reason we do down here is because we got a whole bunch of natural structure and it's good it's been really good uh, and there's actually some dorado actually popping up early which is kind of unusual in about 300 foot of water which is a great early sign for some billfish action coming up in the summer action so the state water snapper fishing like I said, it's been really good but weather's playing a big part in this one also and not so much the seas you know you gotta get some decent seas to get there but the currents are what really playing the biggest thing you go out one day you know, it's pretty calm next day it's kind of really moving on you so they change the feeding habits of the snapper there so if it gets calm try a one to three ounce eagle claw trocar jig uh, the lighter the better with the current allow you and you just kind of want it to go straight down or barely out the back end of the boat there uh, if the currents are good with that use a fish bite strip added to it works really really good work that middle of the water column and the bigger fish are up there they're definitely suspended on the bigger fish when the conditions are right but if the currents are really bad and you can't go and they're flying out the back end and you know go back to a bank weight and with some fish bites or some or some bait on the bottom uh, regulations on state water snapper four per person per day and it definitely is open right now before federal season opens up here in like june so talking, we got a picture of a solid state water snapper there's been a bunch of them like that with conditions are good. wow bub come on now all right tell solid. Me. i like it that's why i love living down here it's uh <laughs> normal like down at that i've seen but there's actually been some few dorado i've been talking to guys in port a and a local guy here in port mansfield told me they caught a good one. They're out in that 300 foot range. Uh, they're on the temp breaks this time of year. So anytime you see a weed lines floating debris or temp break, uh, definitely do that. My favorite way on these guys right now, especially is to pull a full spread of Islander lures uh, with some Ballyhoo rig down them. You can use different sizes on the Islander lure and also attach the bait to them. So use some small, medium or large Ballyhoo, even maybe some smaller little greenbacks work really good on the smaller baits. Uh, troll these at seven and a half to eight knots. Uh, keep an eye on your bait. You know they're going to come up. Sometimes they'll miss or jump. It's great, uh, really, really great fishing and a great combo to use on this. If you're trolling out there, I like to use like a pen 16 to maximum about a 30 watt international uh, with some of these with the Berkeley Chrome mono spooled up on it, and that'll give you plenty of plenty of uh, power to really win. Well, so far, bub, you win the prize. Great pictures, great report. Appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the lower coast region. Captain Chad Kenny says that the land cut has been really good for trout and redfish along the edges of the grass beds and the cuts. And then offshore, state water snapper fishing has been good. Few Dorados are being caught out deeper in 300 foot range. I wonder what the prize could be. All wonder. right, the upper fresh region is full of surprises this week, so stay hooked. But first, Dave Farrell is at the Yak Here workbench for Taco Marine new products with some surprises of his own. Oh wow, yeah, we got some new cool ceramic boat wash, wash and wax. Sweet. I could have used some of this this weekend. I took the dog with me on this skiff. Bad oh, idea. Boy. Oh boy. Wax on, wax off. Idea. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Fish to Win, Fenwick, Feel Everything, Berkeley Prospect Chrome, Island Lures, Tournament Tackle, Sea Sucker, Easy On, Easy Off, Incredibly Strong, Turn on the Bite Anytime, Tie on a Miro Lure, Front Runner Boats, Performance Built Offshore Fishing Boats, Made in the USA, and StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Today's powerful tip is about the total boat control package. When you put a powerful charge in your boat, a powerful move on the bow, and our shallow water anchors on the back, you save over 80 to 90 pounds on your boat compared to the competition. That's a 43% weight savings. To put that in perspective, that's 20 bags of ice out of the boat, 10 gallons of fuel, or 1,300 jig heads coming out of the boat to give you a shallower draft, better hole shot, or more top end speed. That's the powerful premium brand. It's hardcore anglers building the best products in the marine industry, backed by the best customer service here in Tampa, Florida. To learn more about Powerful, go to powerful.com, and that's your powerful tip. Well, 
We are here at the Yak Gear New Products time of the show. Yes, sir. So what? We got to talk about some savage shrimp. Yeah, you know, uh, artificial shrimp's a really cool bait to use. Everything eats a shrimp. So if you've got a an artificial that looks like like a shrimp, it's going to get eaten. And that's the that one doesn't. No, no other ones look more like a shrimp than those. The Savage Gear Manic Shrimp RTF V2. It's modeled after a 3D scan of a real shrimp. So it's, you know, it looks like a real shrimp. It's, it's crazy. It's got that specially designed tail that, that kicks really good when, it, when, you're, when you're popping it on the bottom. Uh, it's got a Duratec 12 times tough TPE plastic that it's made out of. So you can catch multiple fish on it. You don't have to worry about it getting tore up. And this maybe something toothy grabs it, um, and it's you know it's rigged with a weighted, ultra sharp jig head, jig hook inside there. So you know it's it's just it's it's just a really good shrimp, and it, you can fish that under a popping cork. You can fish it by itself. Um, you, you know it's just very versatile, really cool shrimp. Comes in six colors, three different sizes: a three inch, a three and a half inch, and a four and a, a four and a quarter inch. And the, and the weights go from three eighths ounce all the way up to a quarter ounce. So, you know, any kind, any type of uh, uh, situation that you come across where you need a shrimp, they have one for you. All so right. go to savagegear.com to get one of those. Okay. Next, we got these Pro, Trocar Pro-V Bucktail Jigs. You know, they all have that Pro-V bend in there, uh, which is designed to target hook and hold large salt or freshwater fish. Um, it's got a balanced head design with the eyes out forward so you know if you're vertically jigging it it stays nice and vertical and horizontal in the in the water column perfect natural horizontal presentation uh because of that weight forward design and that pro v again you know immediately funnels fish right into that deep part of the bend as soon as you set the hook uh, and it's got the tr the trocar triple triple edged hook point penetrates very easily and even hard mouth fish like groupers and tarpon and you know it'll it'll go into them so go to eagleclaw.com to get your pro v bucktail jig this is what i said i could use you before because i took a little skipper dog out on the boat and the first thing she did was jump in the water and get all muddy and then proceeded to put little foot pads all over my non-skid and uh, i would could have really really liked to add some of this you know the ceramic wash and wax has cutting edge technology to keep your bait boat shiny and clean uh, it has instant results. As soon as you put this on here and wash it down and the boat will sparkle and the bead, the water will bead right off. Just, it's got I've a been ceramic. I've waiting two years. I know, it's got a really cool uh, uh, cer a sacrificial polymer in there and a ceramic underlayer that shields the boat from the sun's rays and uh, keeps stains and dirts and stuff from sticking in the first place. So this is kind of a preemptive deal, so you don't have to really scrub after it. And it's a powerful cleaner as well. So any kind of stains and stuff that you have on there before, it'll get them off and right. then put that under layer of ceramic down, gives an advanced uh, ceramic uh, candy-like finish. And you use you mix a, a, a gallon with two ounces and you're ready to go. So yeah. star bright. All right. Last Tell me about the heels, baby. Well, these are the Sigs. Uh, Sigsby Park is the r real name, and uh, they have <coughs> a really narrow temple and uh, pin hinges in a full wrap, a medium uh, fit, so that they fit really tight to your face. They're great for fishing. Uh, keeps out the wind and the sun because of that close, tight fit. Uh, it comes in seven polarized lens colors uh, with the lapis lens technology, which removed 90% of the blue light and a radically clear view. It's very, very clear, especially if you get the uh, glass. These uh, are my personal glasses. Those are very nice. And they got a little sun ledge inside that blocks the sunlight from inside the frame. It comes with four different frame covers. Those are the ivory tortoise glass, yeah. I bet. Yeah. And they have a light blue and a gray gloss as well. And that also has the nice urban ergonomic uh, rubber pads on the nose and the temples right. to make sure that they stay in place once you put them on. And the best warranty in the business, There Dave. you go. BahiaSunglasses.com to find those. All right, let's and do it. a real person that picks up the phone. Gotta love that. Gotta love it. <laughs> All right, we're seeing what Ray Hubbard, <laughs> Athens, Levon, Tawakini, and of course, Lake Fork hold in store for us in the Upper Fresh region. So Mike, close us out and send us into our weekend. Thank you, Bree. Hey, Captain. Hey, Dave. Hey, bud. Bass fishing up here in the North region sure is awesome. Um, 
So start with Ray Hubbard. The bass are shallow in the green weeds and cattails. So you want to flip your bait as far back in the reeds as you can. Texas Reed rigged creature baits in watermelon with the claws dipped red garlic are your best bet. The bass are spawning there on the nest. Lake Athens with Jay Bonner. The bass are still on nests there. Flipping the grass and the grass lines with Texas Reed creature baits is also, once again, your best bet. But you can also use a forward imaging sonar to find the bigger females on the points, staging in brush piles. Swim baits, jerk baits, and Carolina rig lizards are catching some of the bigger fish. On to my favorite lake where I guide, Lake Fork. Bass fishing is great here. The, continue, the lake continues to put out great fishing for really big bass. Most of the fish are being caught by sight fishing the spawning nest. A great pair of Polaroid glasses is a must. I use the Bajillo brand with the bronze lenses. Um, I also use the power poles. I got 10 foot power poles that locks me down in place. I can lock down in a little bit deeper water. But creature baits like the Bass Assassin Whoop a Craw in the colors white and or Alabama Craw are the best bed fishing baits for here on Fork. The topwater bite's just starting to pick up and it's going to get better after these big bass, the spawn comes to finish. Poppers like the Berkeley Bullet Pop will do the job really, really well. It's one of my favorites, the Bullet Pop 70. And then the Shad Spawn, as it kicks off, I really like to use the Bass Assassin Assassin Shad in white or albino colors. Albino color works really good here on Fork. Those are the best for your Shad Spawn presentations. And here's a pic of a big fish that a young man caught with me just last week. Nice. <clears throat> All right, what else you got for us, bub? Let's move on to crappie. Crappie fishing on Lake Levant. Crappie are in 3 to 15 feet of water. Some are setting up for spawning beds. A lot of pre-spawn fish are roaming around, hanging around brush piles in that 5 to 15 feet. Hand-tied jigs and minnows are working well. The northern end of the lake is where you'll find more of the spawning fish and spawning action. A lot of those fish are on structure in 2 to 7 feet of water, where minnows under a bobber set about 3 foot are cleaning up. Let's do the crappie on Lake Fork with my favorite crappie guide of all times, Jackie Wiggins, the hardest working guide on Lake Fork. He says that the lake is really heating up. There's lots of big fish and lots of numbers showing up on timber, 8 to 14 feet. He's seen shallow fish up in less than 4 feet spawning, um, and there's fish all the way still out in 30 feet. You can find fish on brush piles, laydowns, bridges, they're all over the place, so covering a lot of water and checking multiple patterns on a daily basis is really important. Everything changes a lot with the weather this time of year, so you got to move kind of in and out. But small hand tied jigs are working well, and minnows are always your best bet for any time of year. He also said that some soft plastics will work and get you bit until the bite gets finicky around June. But here is two tables, two picks of just... I mean, look at the size of these crappie in these pictures. These are giant crappie. Giant. giant. Wow. They're going to eat well. Wow. The only thing, only thing well. wrong with that is the three of us <laughs> aren't there for the fish fry. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some stripers, white bass, and hybrid. Lake Levon with Kerry Thorne. He says white bass are on the main lake points in 15 to 25 feet of water where one ounce white or chartreuse slabs tied with a marabou jig above them. So that's a marabou jig 18 inches above the slab spoon and you can catch two fish at a time. Uh, he also says there's a little bit of surfacing action there. Throw small swim baits, and I like the Berkeley Drift Walker. It's a perfect top water for that surface activity. Lake Tawakany, Stripers Hybrids there with Matt Cartwright. Cartwright says that they are excellent, still spawning in 25 to 30 feet of water along the dam and on main lake points. And then if you want, we can throw you a little catfish report. Lake Fork, catfish bites excellent. Um, the catfish around the roosting trees in 12 to 20 feet of water. That kind of concludes what I got for you guys. And it's really been a good week up here in the Upper Fresh region. You did a great job. Thanks for batting cleanup for us, sir. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Ducks Unlimited hotspots from the Upper Fresh region. Mike says the giant bass and big crappie continue to spawn on the world famous Lake Fork, making for some hottest fishing in the Upper Fresh region. 8 to 10 pound bass and 2 to 3 pound crappie are being caught in the shallow waters on a daily basis. Can you believe that? I believe it. I believe it. Rick, I you have gone full purple today. 
I just want to say, even your bahias, I mean, you're just a purple picture perfect man over here. Oh, thank you, Bree. You, you don't very we often just, compliment me, so I'll take it. That was a compliment. Purple right. people So here. we were just discussing all of our bahias. Right. Yes. And these are kind of the smaller frames. Like, these are soldados. Right. Yeah, I like and the And these are more of aviator style. You have piedras. Yeah. I also wear piedras when I'm on the water. Yeah. These are kind and of more And these are the my, new six. Exactly. These are... These are all great options for smaller faces. We gotta say goodbye. We do have to say goodbye. <laughs> I don't big want head, to though. Small face. <laughs> Bye guys, Bye, thanks guys. for tuning in. Thanks Go out and watching. catch those fish. We'll see you next week.